Wives of the governors of the 19 northern states say they are concerned about the huge number of out-of-school children and drug abuse prevalent in the north. At a forum in Abuja, the women have been discussing how to reverse the negative trends. Chairperson of the Northern Governor's Wives Forum, Adiza El Rufai. They say the forum was formed to address issues that are peculiar to the North and not for political reasons. They're asking for media support to get their messages across for effective implementation. Gender-based violence. This is just like the umbrella term for any violence that is gender-based. And unfortunately, mostly the rape is against the women. I know men tend to argue that some men also get raped. Yes. <laughs> I don't dispute that. All I'm saying is when you look at the prevalence, you know it's women that are at the receiving end. Uh, we will take, obviously, these things forward and uh, make sure that it is sustained, you know, further after 2023. Okay, joining us remotely now to discuss this issue further is the wife of the Kaduna State Governor, Hadiza El Rufai. Very warm welcome, madam, to News Night. Okay, Thank I just want to ask you, I mean, your objectives uh, basically uh, as uh, enunciated there, one is to redress the out-of-school uh, children in the north, which is very prevalent, like you said, and the drug abuse, you know, um, prevalence too in, in the north amongst the youths. And with the spate of banditry, kidnapping, schools are closed and the situation really getting worse. How? What are the solutions that your association are going to put forward to redress all this? Um, thank you very much for that question. Actually, at the Northern Governors Wives Forum, we have two key issues that we want to address. The first is gender-based violence, and the second is the drug abuse. Um, we all know that we have a lot of ills in the society, but as a forum, we decided to take up these two problems. As for the out-of-school children, we all know that one problem leads to another. And unfortunately, now with the increase in banditry and the kidnapping of school children, it's such a pity because already in Nigeria, we have so many out of school children and the problems we're having will only make it worse for us. So we are working with um, some government agencies, particularly we are working with the special advisor on um, the president's special advisor on social investments. They have a program called at, for the at-risk at, at children. So I think this is very important and it's one of the ways that we can use to address this problem. We want to see that we capture as many children as possible and this will be based in the different states so that those that have already lost out and have not benefited from western education and they are sort of outside that age range they will be given basic literacy and numeracy and then trained so that they can be able to make a living Right, and it's quite important what you have just mentioned right now, the fact that you're seeing, uh, we're seeing a collaboration from the federal to the state level. But my concern really goes beyond that because if you look at the data, prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, 13.5 million out-of-school children in Nigeria and guess what? 85% of those children are in northern Nigeria. And of course, the pandemic added more numbers to that, especially the education of the girl child was affected. But all of this collaborative effort, what are we doing to really get to the grassroots where we're seeing these children drop out of school for whatever reason? You're quite correct. Actually, this problem is a problem of the whole country, but it is particularly a problem of northern Nigeria. So, and like you rightly said, these 
problems have to be tackled at the grassroots. That is why we intend to go down to the grassroots level to work with community leaders, religious leaders, to see how we can make this, um, to see how we can succeed with this program. What we intend to do is to get um, people to train that will actually look after these children and make sure that they follow them to see how well they are doing. Not necessarily in the academics, but also in sports. Sports is one of the things that has been identified as uh, a way of engaging the children so that they can, they can have something to do so that they can be engaged because you know when they are idle, that is when they are drawn into some of these nefarious activities. So there are various things we want to use to help this problem. Of course, the ideal thing is for all children to be able to go to school. But as you know, we already have at-risk children that have already gone past that age, but these people should not be left behind. These children should not be left behind. And they too, something has to be done to make sure that they become important and um, so the members of the society, not just important, but they should be able to make a living for themselves and become responsible members of the Nigerian society. Well, okay, uh, madam, uh, one issue that a lot of uh, critics would raise is that the issue of out-of-school children, the Almagery system, is a systemic perpetuation of poverty arising from religious and cultural beliefs. What would you say as wives of governors of northern Nigeria where poverty is at the zenith, why is a school feeding program not attracting the children and keeping them in school? I think the school feeding program has done a lot in attracting children. I remember in Kaduna State when it was started, the enrollment um, rose considerably. In fact, it was such, it, it became almost like a problem because where you have like 30 students in a class who are getting 80 over that, mainly because of that school feeding program. So I think that's one of the things that should be continued as much as possible. Of course, we know that government has a lot of things on its plate and um, you know the revenue is not uh, unlimited, but I think whatever we do, we should try and keep that school feeding program because it is one of the things that really attracts the children and encourages the parents to send their children to school. They know that they will get at least one good meal a day. Uh, well, getting a meal a day is quite important because, of course, we know that that nexus between poverty uh, and hunger and insecurity that has been established, not just peculiar to northern Nigeria, but the world over where we see conflicts. But let's move on to other issues, especially as it has to do with drug abuse, which, you know, your association is looking to address. And from all the research that we've done, uh, the United Nations uh, Office on Drug and Crime actually did put a figure in terms of the drug abuse levels in Nigeria. Unfortunately, again... Northern Nigeria has a high rate of codeine abuse and women are the ones who are Obviously. guilty of actually, you know, abusing this due to some either emotional uh, trauma or even economic pressures. But you now as a northern woman, we do know, you know, the cultural and the traditional barriers that limits the woman in Nigeria, especially in the north. What are you doing really to address this, to ensure that these statistics, you know, changes in the shortest possible time? Yes, the problem of drug abuse is really a problem that all of us should be concerned about. And um, unfortunately, it's such a huge, huge problem that we all have to do what we can to address it. Even countries that are better positioned than Nigeria are still having a lot of problem trying to deal with drug abuse. 
It has to do with criminality. There are so many issues involved. And as you said, um, it is true that a lot of our women abuse drugs. But you know, you can't look at these things in a simplistic way. Why do they do that? Some are frustrated. Some of these women, they are in abusive relationships and they have no other means of you know, making things better for themselves, which also brings us back to the question of education. I believe that every woman should be able to have some form of financial independence because some of these women remain in their matrimonial homes because they don't have any other option and the men frustrate them. I'm sorry to say, but you know it happens. The men frustrate them and they think that taking drugs or taking codeine is the solution. So these things are all interrelated. Social problems are very complex. These things are interrelated. It has Indeed, to do with... very complex, uh, madam. And, uh, culture we, is quite complex, yes. Yeah, we, we uh, just hope that you continue to marshal uh, those uh, things that will uh, reverse the trend uh, in northern Nigeria and uh, Nigeria generally. Uh, that's Adiza El Rufai, wife of Kaduna State Governor and chairperson of Northern Governors Wife Forum on Newsnight. Thanks for joining us.